Welcome into the Irish NFL show as we continue our look at the AFC conference and this division was arguably one of the most talked about divisions last season. I imagine it will be the same come this season, 2023 season, the AFC East. Colin Connor, it's great to have you here with me for this recap of a very interesting division. Great yeah, lots, lots, uh, lots happening in, in this division, obviously in the off season. So plenty for us to to delve into ever before training camps even begin Connor. yeah i'm looking forward to talking about this one my old friend aaron Rodgers, obviously still the owner of the bears as he tell you himself so you know obviously i wish ownership well in their new location <laughs> well i'll start with you Connor. and and i was looking at the uh, division order from last season and the jets did come come last but now in fairness they were in the melting pot for quite a large part of the season, so maybe it's a little bit unfair to say they were the worst team in the division. But look, this long drawn out saga finally came to an end at the week of the draft, which was the Aaron Rodgers trade. And it's not just that Aaron Rodgers that's come, you know, come over. It's well, I wouldn't say it's the entirety of the Packers team, but there's so many players that have jumped on this bandwagon. It does kind of remind me a little bit of the Tom Brady esque situation in Tampa, but. Should we be as high on, on the Jets that, say, the NFL media are across, across, across the states, across Europe? Like, they do have a, lot, a good team, really strong offense, and he's going to obviously fit into that. But it is very much a, a win-now type of scenario. It is, yeah. And I was thinking about this earlier, as in, what's the maximum level the Jets can get to here and fail and for it still to have been a qualified success, right? Sorry, I know that's a kind of a, a very convoluted way to describe it, but... If they get to a Super Bowl and lose, is that acceptable? If they get to the AFC Championship game and lose, is that acceptable? If they get to a divisional round and they go out, which has been the pattern for Aaron Rodgers since he actually won the Super Bowl, let's not forget, um, that's probably a bust for, for this year. You know, Then he's going into the next year and you've got a 40-year-old quarterback. You know, A lot of this depends, obviously, as everybody's been saying, on what version of Aaron Rodgers we get. Do we get MVP Aaron Rodgers? Do we get... What the narrative is telling us out of the the off season that you know the big love in there and everybody himself included looking refreshed and renewed and this is the the weight off his shoulders now and he rolls into town as you say with with some of the band back together all the superannuated members of the of the Green Bay receiving core anyway went with him um, and you quite rightly call out the Tom Brady comparison because that example uh, that template clearly lives rent free in Aaron Rodgers head like that seems to have been the genesis of all the trouble like forget about drafting Jordan Love and what that did to, to, to Aaron Rodgers mentality that seemed to get the best out of him arguably as, as I've, I've talked about previously on, on another podcast the fact that Brady pitches up and Brady gets Leonard Fournette and Brady gets Gronk and Brady gets the, the the books to take a punt and it was a massive punt when you think about it even though it did work out until it didn't on Antonio Brown you know, Rogers is looking at that and going, why won't the Packers do that for me? Like, all they ever do is seem to push against me. You know, here I am and I'm in my prime and we have the window and it's still open wide. And all we need is one or two more pieces. And Brady rocks into town and gets everything he wants and they go they go and get the ring. And um, the Packers do nothing for me. They, they, they finally draft an offensive player in the first round. And what do they do? They draft my replacement. Um, and that seems to have really set the the pigeons racing in his head and, and brought about this, this what seemed for years to be an inevitability. And, and now it's finally done. But a lot of what transpires, I think, in, I was going to say New York, New Jersey, this, this season will depend on the extent to which Rodgers shows the kind of leadership that got Brady where he is. Like, let's think about the things that Aaron Rodgers does well. Uh, even I will admit having, you know, and I'll spare you my extended years of trauma. And, you know, he's, what, 24 and 5 against the Bears over his career in the in the NFC North. But you know, as good a quarterback as I've ever seen throw a ball. And I will absolutely give him that any, any day of the week. Um, you know, fits the ball into incredible tight windows, has incredible vision, incredible pre-snap read. You know, you look at all that stuff he does when nobody takes better advantage of a free play than him. Nobody's more accurate from, from Hail Mary's, which is, you know, supposed to be a contradiction in terms. You're just tossing the ball up, not when you're Aaron Rodgers. He, he is amazing. And if you get the best version of Aaron Rodgers, they're absolutely Super Bowl contenders. We all know that. But... What happens when you get a bump in the road? A, a word that you don't associate with Aaron Rodgers is accountability. It's always someone else's fault. It was Lafleur's fault for not going for it on fourth down uh, against the Bucks. It was, 
um, the, the, the defense's fault. It was the special team's fault. It was the receiving core's fault. It's always someone else's to blame. When Rodgers, and we talked about it before again, but I'll, I'll say it once more, didn't show up for the for, for the OTAs last year when he had a young receiving core. You heard Romeo Dubs. And, and to be fair, the Packers generally haven't you know thrown any dirt on his coffin since he left Green Bay. And, and you haven't heard angry words or, or vindictive words from any of the players, which is probably a good sign and maybe is better reflective of the leadership he shows in the locker room than sometimes what we see outside. But one interesting and perhaps telling comment from Romeo Dubs was that Dubs said Rogers barely even spoke to him. Like that's not a way of getting your young receivers on board and and engendering the type of team culture that that sees you well when when you need to show resilience. Um, and and you look at that Jets schedule like they it, it's like starting the week on leg day. You know it might be good for you, but do you really want to go there first up? Like they have the Bills first up, they have the Cowboys, they have the Eagles, and they have the Chiefs all in their first six games. Like. Obviously, you're playing arguably the best team in your division, arguably the best team in the NFL, and arguably one of, if not the best team, depending on how they go in the other conference, all in your first six weeks. You come out of that four and two, and you know then you're starting to believe. But you come out of that one and five or two and four and already looking for snookers, you know, then we'll see what kind of leadership Rodgers is really primed to provide uh, in New York and whether he is the guy that can that can deliver them that title. You know, because if we're talking about the Jets as contenders, we're, we're denying the evidence of our eyes over, over how many years you're expecting a team with a historically losing culture to suddenly flip it around. And look, let's face it, that's what keeps most of it involved and interested in the NFL every year. The idea which is you know, genuinely at times when you squint and when you wish hard enough, just about possible to do in the NFL. And we can all call out examples of when it has actually happened. And um, but that's what you're expecting the Jets to do, to turn history on its head um, and deliver the Lombardi back to back to New York for the first time since since, since Willie Joe named. Colin Connors made some really very valid points around the Packers and this lost relationship between Rodgers and some of the players over the course of the last few years. And and in particular, he was very vocal about some of the preparation of the players in the last offseason during the training camp. Garrett Wilson was very excited about him coming in. Brees Hall's coming back from a serious injury, but looks a great running back. You know, very excited. On the other side of the ball, you have Sauce Gardner. All these players that seem to want to play with Rodgers, and you called it out on the show, and, and Connor's right, you called it out. This kind of refreshed looking Aaron Rodgers that we saw from day one. But he has said a couple of little things already, little nuggets of information, you know, during, during these uh, voluntary camps around the level of expectation and the commitment the players have to show and the desire. I don't think necessarily anybody is kind of doing anything in, in particular that he's not happy with it, but he is already kind of pushing the needle. With Nathaniel, with Nathaniel Hackett there, who has the relationship, Robert Sala, like, where ultimately do you see the pressure throughout the course of the season? Because Aaron Rodgers can very much step into the, it's my first year here, if things don't go according to plan. Is it on Sala? Because he has to be under a bit, bit of pressure to deliver with the amount of players now Joe Douglas has put at his disposal. I think there's pressure on all of them, right? Because Connor points out about Brady, right? And Brady walked in to Tampa Bay and, and wins the Super Bowl in year one. And I think like there's so there's so many things to this, right? The the thing is with Brady and, and Manning, people forget like for or, or just choose to ignore they were both free agent signings, right? There was no trade that you had to do. You didn't have to give up any capital. You were able to build teams around them immediately, which hasn't been the case with Russell Wilson, with Deshaun Watson, and now with Aaron Rodgers. You know, you had to give up quite a lot. And so I do think there will be pressure on Rodgers himself. I think he can, and he looks refreshed because, look, he's walked into a situation where Zach Wilson, Mike White, Joe Flacco, Josh Johnson, Sam Darnold, Luke Falk, Trevor Simeon, Josh McCown. I mean, he is a peacock in a turkey pen. Uh, he, has, he can absolutely lord it over all of those, right? And he has a ring. And sorry, Connor, but like the Jets are the, the only the Bears have had this worse history of franchise QBs, right? And so he goes in there and he is hailed instantly because he has he has the ability, he has, um, you know, the, the ring that they don't have. But I, I do think there will be expectations. The, the hacker thing, I'm, I'm intrigued to see how that goes. Because remember when, yeah, okay, they got on and we've heard Aaron Rodgers talk very favorably 
about Nathaniel Hackett. That was the reason Nathaniel Hackett got the Broncos job was the hope of enticing him in. But Hackett didn't call plays when, you know, they, he was in Green Bay. So there is huge pressure on Nathaniel Hackett. And if they get off to a bad start, particularly if it doesn't look good on offense, I think that people will immediately start pointing fingers at Hackett and rightly so. I mean, look, I, keep, I mentioned it before, but it's worth highlighting. The crowd were counting down the play clock. That's how bad things were. The Jets cannot afford that. You know, the Broncos had a number of kind of high profile games at the start of last year. There's the immediate spotlight on you. That will be ever, ever brighter in New York. And with the opening games that Connor has outlined. And obviously for, for Salah, I mean, you know, he look, this was going to happen, right? And they had to upgrade at, at QB, obviously. And they've gone out and got Rodgers. But to Connor's question around, you know, what for it to be considered justified, I think it has to be that they're, they're at least, at least in the championship game, but more realistically, probably in the Super Bowl. Um, they can, if they lose it, they lose it. But I think they have to to be there because of what they gave up. And the window is so small. Like, what are we talking about? Two, three years, probably. Um, you know, the, he's 39 years of age. So it's not like they, they have brought in a guy who, you know, has a, can play for six, seven years. So it is a, a small window. Everybody from the GM to the head coach to the offensive coordinator to the QB is going to, um, you know, be be under pressure. Pressure sometimes creates diamonds. That's what the Jets faithful are going to be hoping for. Connor, I just want to ask you a question around the uh, the wide receiver uh, combos that came in during free agency. And I, feel, I just feel like a lot of these players were brought in to kind of satisfy Rodgers, in particular Randall Cobb. Like I'm not sure how much he's got left in the tank. Alan Lazard has obviously been kind of one of his favourites. He got him in, and one that's kind of floated under the radar because of the amount of Packers players that have come in, because there is quite a lot of you, you know, offensive line, Turner on the defence, Amos. But uh, Mikael Harbin has come in from the Chiefs, and whilst he's been inconsistent for the Chiefs at times, you know, he's carried a lot of injuries. He's quite a dynamic player and someone that could take the, the top off a of defence. Like, are we looking at a player there that maybe will step step away from the kind of the scrutiny and coverage that will be around the players that have come in from Green Bay as opposed to a player who's played for the Chiefs, won a Super Bowl and on his day can be really good in the league. Yeah, I mean, he's he's the one acquisition there that you think actually adds to what they have, you know, rather than just maybe cluttering up that wide receiver room. You know, you, do you really want to be taking uh, targets away from, from Garrett Wilson, as explosive as he is? What you want to be doing is taking attention away from Garrett Wilson, which is what Hardman is capable of doing. Um, those others, as you say, Big question mark over how much they have in the tank and to the extent to which they're there just to placate Rogers and, and replicate his version of the of, of the Tom Brady fantasy in uh, in 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 New York. Um, the other example that, that that springs to mind, of course, that we haven't talked about is is the Rams when when they went and got Stafford to to, to load up and, and go after the NFC. But that to me and to your point, Colin, is qualitatively different from what the Jets face here because if you look at the AFC and you're not the Chiefs, the Bengals, or the Bills. You got to go and beat the Bengals, the Chiefs, or the Bills. You know, assuming that they all turn out to be as good, and we'll talk about the Bills shortly, as good as we kind of expect them to be this year. It's a, it's a tough, tough, tough conference to come out of, as we've been saying again and again and again. So, what sort of record are you going to need to post to get to the to get to the the playoffs in good shape? You don't want to be going there as a wild card in, in the AFC. It's just such a tough path. We talked when we were talking about the AFC North about the path that the Bengals had last year and. Fair play to them; they damn near pulled it off. But you really don't want to be going on the road in the divisional in the divisional round and uh, in an AFC Championship game. We talked about the importance of the Chiefs playing all of those AFC Championship games at home and what that has ultimately led to in terms of their appearances in the Super Bowl and their ability to convert them into into wins. And um, the Jets really don't want to start the season slowly. And you know, to your point, Colm, it's a very very demanding media market. It's a demanding um, part of the world to be in. Uh, and there, there's no time to kind of figure it out. You know, you got to fly the plane and get up to Mach 1 pretty pretty quickly. Colin, one thing that he really obviously had in Green Bay for a large parts of his time there was a really strong offensive line. And the Jets really have kind of suffered over the last couple of years. Like, McCoy Becton was one of the four that was, you know, 
drafted in, in April 2020. He's had his weight problems. It looks like he's kind of back now and refocused. And they went center in the second round. They brought an offensive line in the fourth round. A lot of Jets fans said they really wanted to see offensive line in the fourth round. It didn't play out that way. And they went defense. Is that something that's still a bit in, in flux? You know, Rodgers may have a may play well, but he could be under constant pressure. Like, are we going to see an offensive line that's going to be bang on the money come week one? Because that t- sometimes takes that transition from a new quarterback. We saw it with Jensen in, in Tampa, how he couldn't get over the amount of stuff in which he was being fed by Tom, Tom Brady, and it was like, you know, compared to what he was so used to. Because that's something that's going to take a long time to gel, or are we going to hit, see that kick in straight away? That's going to be difficult. Yeah, I like. I mean, you say it didn't play out that way. It didn't play out that way because Bill Belichick <laughs> basically allowed the Steelers to to go up and get Broderick Jones. And I think the Jets' thinking was probably somewhat similar to what the Bucks did with Tristan Wirfs: get the young tackle in, have the experienced hand at, at QB there, um, but the talent will will carry him. And obviously, that didn't work out. Now they brought in Billy Turner, who is serviceable has a lot of experience um would have played uh, with him in uh, green bay but but that is a piece obviously that they're going to have to have concerns around because again it doesn't matter how good um a quarterback you are you need the the o-line that's why the chiefs went out and invested in it the way they did that's why the bengals have invested in it the the way they did so that is something that you know you'd have to to keep an eye on now, defensively they had like you know they have been really impressive and sauce is just so good and um and i think the pieces that they have added uh, should should help and i think salah is a very good um defensive uh, coach so you know they they but they they need given they are in the arc um their offense has to be more than merely serviceable. That, that the days of you know we can rely on a really good defense and a serviceable offense, um, those are over. Um, and so, yeah, you you would have to say it is so a little bit of a of a concern. They probably don't have the line exactly where uh, they they want it. And I think um, with Brees Hall coming back from an ACL injury, I go you know. What what's that look like? You know, unless you're Adrian Peterson, and there are very few Adrian Petersons coming back off an ACL injury for a running back generally takes a, a little bit of time, no matter how talented you are. I'm gonna close out the Jets one with a bit of bit of fun, guys. I know it's the end of June, but we've all commented on their schedule. Um, I'm gonna throw a few games at you, and I want a few uh, bit of early early picks come come September. It could all be very different. They start off with the Bills at home. Do you think they'll win that game, Connor? So what, I'm going to go out on a limb here and I may be showing my hand in terms of what I'm going to say about the Bills. I think they will win it. Callum? I, I, I think, yeah, I, I think I think that I, at home, I think it, they, the fact that they started at home, I'm going to say that they have a real, a real shot with the way, and we're going to come to the Bills, but with the way things are playing out um, up in Buffalo, and with the way I expect the Bills to start the season, I think the Jets are in with a shot of winning that. I'll go Bills. Uh, I'm going to give you up to their boy week because they are early in the season. Uh, Cowboys on the road, we too. No, they're losing that one in my view. Colin? I, I, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have them at 2-0 and after the, the first two weeks. Pats at home week three, I'll give them the win. Connor? Yeah, I'm not going to argue with you there. I think they'll win that one. No. Bill Belichick is going. I mean, this this he is going to absolutely do everything he possibly can uh, to to ruin on the Jets parade. The is possibly the the you know the main motivating factor in the man's life. Uh, so I'm going to say no. He Bill's going to get one over on them. We'll have to come back to these now. Come uh, come September, October, and see where we're at. Um, Glory is on a Monday, Sunday night football at home to the Chiefs. Chiefs for me. Well, that's an L for me as well for, for the Jets. I mean, yeah. Yeah, for me, they start to two and oh, but after week four, they're two and two. Colin might give us a one on this one. Yeah. Broncos on the road. I will give I'll give the Jets the win. I oh, I'm giving that one to the Jets as well. <laughs> I, I I've got ah well in that in that case I'm gonna go they start two and oh they're now they're now two and three after five weeks. <laughs> 
Right, Connor. And then they close out. Uh, gee, Mac, here we go again. Like week six, uh, before their bye week, at home to the Eagles. I have them starting pretty well, but I think they're going to book a loss there. What does that make me? Th- I, I think I'm putting them three and three over those six games. I'm sitting on the fence, really. I'm at two and four. I, I'm two and four as well. I, I don't think they beat the Eagles. And I'll throw another one in. Do you know how they played a week after the bye week? The Giants, so that's a loss. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so he, yeah. so well, I, yeah, I, I think you're okay. So after after their first seven games, I have them probably three and four. That's uh, okay. probably not what Jet fans want to hear. That would may well change by the time you know we get to. Uh, it's just, yeah, I suppose the reason why I wanted to do. It, I know it's only a bit. Of, it's all a bit of tongue in cheek. Come come the end of June, but like. Like we touched on them before we start recording. Like it's a really tough schedule, and we haven't even got into the second part of the season. And they're playing predominantly most of the games at the start of the season at home. And I know that can go a very different way. Like some teams tend to be better on, on the road, you know, in the second half of the season, as opposed to being under pressure playing home games. It just talks about the enormity of what they had them in a competitive division. We haven't even got into many divisional games there. Just the one in. Sorry, we had the two. 